bonds of, of friendship that kind of get formed along the way. Now. Hi. Hi. Hello and welcome back. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for being a part of Founders and Legends Day here on twitch.tv slash dnd. Thank you Todd Kenrick and DnD Beyond for making these beautiful videos for our, of our Watsi folks talking about the game, the history of the game, all the things in regards to the game. This day is about Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop gaming and mostly Dungeons and Dragons. But for those of you who are kind of just tuning in, uh, thank you. We just had a three hour live game from Dwarven Forge's Stefan Porknoy, and it was a hoot. We were listening in the back, watching on a different screen, and oh my goodness, that this silly wonderfulness. Charming. Charming wonderfulness of an AD&D game, low level AD&D game. Before we begin our new interview, what I want you guys to know is that we are raising money for Extra Life, so go to extra-life.org slash team slash d and and go ahead and donate. It's for a wonderful cause. We, Maze Arcana has a page. Mike Merles has a page and is like making subclasses. It's super crazy and awesome. So go ahead and be a part of this wonderful momentous occasion and donate. And if you want to be a little more a part of it, go get your Founders and Legends Day shirts at Threadless. Oh, wait, uh, Founders and Legends dot threadless dot com there it is. or something similar i think it's <laughs> down here yeah. so go to the thing get the thing and enjoy the rest of our 12 hour adventure uh, right now we have two men that are very close to my heart and two guys that i just really am honored to be able to play games with on a regular and quasi-regular basis, Ivan Van Norman and Rudy Rutenberg. I know all about you guys. <laughs> but why don't you guys tell everybody who you are and, and the things that you created? Uh, I'm Ivan Van Norman. Uh, I'm a host, a producer, and a publisher of uh, role-playing games and children's book, especially the brand new, on pre-order now, ABCs of D&D, as well as the one, two, threes of D&D. It's, uh, it's actually kind of interesting and fun and weird that I'm doing a children's book with D&D. It's a thing now. Um, but I also uh, produce uh, shows like um, Sagas of Sundry and uh, We Are Live Frontier, and then uh, I co-wrote the Stream of Many Eyes with Elisa Tij, who you saw earlier. Um, and yeah, fun times. Yeah, and I am Rudy, and I write for Dungeons and Dragons, as well as being uh, one half, probably not the better half, of Maze Arcana uh, with Satine Phoenix here, and we create content uh, on all forms of different role-playing games and, and stuff like that, but our, I'd say our heaviest focus is Dungeons and Dragons. You and, are an actual and, play creator. And? We are an actual play creator, and? And, and, and? Um, books. What we write, um, specifically, I just uh, had the release of uh, The Wayfinder's Guide to ah! Eberron. Yes. What? <laughs> which yeah. is great for, uh, for us because we love Eberron, and that's really what Maze Arcana was kind of built over and around because of our relationship with D&D and with Keith Baker and... Uh, mostly Keith Baker. It's mo been, mostly <laughs> Keith. And it's been doing pretty good on DTRPG, uh, I've seen. Yeah, yeah, and so, Dm's Guild. Well, so the so. Dm's Guild, we actually yeah. uh, just broke the platinum. kind of like the threshold. No, we've been platinum for the. It went first day platinum. What? Yeah, it went yeah. first day platinum. It's, it's, an, it's new. It went it's platinum. New. People have been Everyone wanting it. Yes. It went platinum faster than Xanathar's Lost Notes. Everything else. Sweet. Yeah, which was the other one that I Again, wrote for fifth edition. Yeah. So, well, yeah. So it's it's huge, and uh, we're excited about it, and we're kind of just seeing how high that number gets because I think of non like a PDF materials. It's. It reached 5,000 uh, faster than anything else has that was just... Well, PDFs uh, are still pretty awesome. Yeah. They're definitely, uh, we're slowly and slowly, tablets and uh, technology are being good enough where we, we are enjoying reading our content on uh, digital media instead of having the library of books. Right. Still satisfying to go through a library of books. And we also have it on D&D Beyond now. So yeah. if you have one of those, uh, either one of those things, you can go to uh, the dmsguild.com and then just look up Wayfinder's Guide or even just click on Eberron uh, or just go to the bestsellers list because it's number one right now. 
And uh, if you go to that, you can grab that, yeah. or you can go to the DM, or you can go to D and D Beyond and pick it up to use it in their uh, handy dandy new spreadsheets that they've got for their character creation stuff. So, oh, yeah, yeah you can put your Kalistar and Warforged all up in that. Cool. So one of the cool things about creating content now versus say 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago is that you know by putting things up online they can be updated. Right. And I think that's one of the things that's really interesting where we all want to print our stuff out but right. with heavy content books it's really valuable to be able to update them. Like, uh, you see it a lot on the DMs Guild. Right. Well, even beta testing, it's so almost important now for content creators who are in the RPG space to have early access PDFs because that crucial feedback you get when that stuff's out and early is, is pretty great. The challenge is, is, is that kind of like what video games deal with, with early access trailers right. and, you know, uh, stuff that may not look polished, but it is is in a work in progress. Is you have to dance that fine line between like, oh, is this good enough to where, you know, no one's going to review my game based on an early access, right. and are am I going to get, you know, uh, constructive feedback uh, on when it actually goes out. And that's actually what we're doing right now with the Wayfinder's Guide is that it is actually a living document. That's uh, right. right, and that's so yeah. that when, whenever, if ever, if we're lucky, and Eberron actually does get made into a hardback, it will have gone through a an extensive playtesting yeah. beyond the playtesting, because we, we've actually been playtesting those things on yeah. Maze Arcana for two years. Yeah, but you never know until yeah. people are out there combing it, right. combing it, looking for all the little things, and they come up with scenarios you never even thought of. Yeah, and so a lot of those, uh, a lot of that is kind of what, like, this is, Eberron is official. It's real. It's live. Yeah. And uh, anybody that finds something in there or just doesn't agree with something that's in there, the do we get, is it there? <laughs> I wanted to grab at it earlier. There's a fly here if you can't see it buzzing around We're against this white. going for his face like <laughs> Sneak attack. That's uh, what friends but do. the whole point of, of the way that we're doing it is so that we can actually give Eberron what it deserves as yeah. far as a release so that anything that you find that's in there, like, let us know. Because if it doesn't mesh with something else or if it runs over the toes of something else, like, that's kind of the point of it. Good news is you don't have to really beta test kids' books. You know? Fair. Kids yeah. actually like it. Yeah. So I have a question for you guys. You're both writers, you're both game designers. Um, there are easier ways to make a living in the world. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah. What, 90? But like what is them? it about Dungeons and Dragons that have made you like Gary Gygax and others kind of shift your focus and continue on this path, which has been a very good and successful right. path for both I know you. specifically. Just breaking it down product by product as an example, I made the R the ABCs of RPGs because of a couple of reasons. One, I had just had a kid, and I was looking for kids' content out there that really jived with um, the hobbies and the things that I loved. And so every new parent does that, where you're, you're getting excited, and you kind of want to buy up all the cool things that are fun that you want to eventually share. And I was surprised by just how much of a lack of RPG content that that geared specifically towards just the learning, because there's mm. there's kids out there that are for, you know, kids like Monty Cook has his uh, No Thank You Evil, <laughs> and like uh, little Antoine Boza did a, a RPG called Little Wizards. Mm. Like Everybody murder hobos. Yeah, <laughs> well, they have they all have stuff that is out there for games to play, but even just the learning, just the simple, like, first five, you know, kind of building process. So I just said, you know what? It's not out there. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to make one. So you approach it from being a parent, and yeah. I approach it from being a kid, because I'm, like, I'm in a candy <laughs> shop the whole time right, going, like, what can I play with? What can I do? Right. Uh, and there's, like, there's a lot of other games uh, that really get me excited in into the point of where, like, I want to know how to be able to pull themes from everywhere, from movies, from games, from all the stuff like that, for my writing, right. whether that's for RPGs, uh, whether that's for film and television stuff, or uh, whether that is just reading through old D&D &D content and being like, well, this hasn't been updated yet. 
like I wonder if it's because nobody's figured that out yet. Right. So like, you know, everything takes time though yeah. too. Like you have to make sure you're dedicating. And one of the things that is kind of difficult about this being a hobby industry, keyword being hobby, hobby. it is something that we all do because it is fun, mm -hmm. not because it is necessarily going to buy us houses on particular nope. hills. Not at uh, all. The or a house at all. Or a house at all. Uh, it's just exciting to be able to participate and put the time into something that you want to share and have fun with. Exactly. And, and Jonathan Gilmore, who is a very celebrated board game designer, he told me something that I'll forever remember as I design games moving forward, is, is that he feels like um, when you're building games, you should always try to build a great experience yep. and then build your product around that great experience. Right. And that reminded me of back in the times when the first Halo was being produced and the whole point of the reason that game had the uh, amount of veracity that it had through pop culture through the years is because they made a great experience and they replicated that process over and over again and they dressed it in an amazing story. Right, and they filled a hole that was previously not uh, not really actualized, and that's so. Finding you know, problems and solving them has been the modicum of making stuff for ever. centuries. Ever, it's ever. the mother of ingenuity. Mother of ingenuity. Right. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, that's all the time we have right now. Um, but we could go on for hours. We should just <laughs> hang nice out and film us talking about we should. this another Absolutely. time because cheers. I just I really love your brains. Uh, cheers to you guys yes. for Boom. being Boom. here, yeah. and you no both are Thank you for going. inviting us. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah. Uh, you're both going to be on the next game. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to start just now. We're going to another Todd Kenrick video. And this one was recorded yesterday Ooh. with Luke Gygax with a little bit more in-depth history of Ooh. Luke and his dad. Yay. I lied to you all. What's going to happen is something else. <laughs> and we'll be back in two minutes. That may mean... We're cutting now. That may mean we're cutting in two minutes, but something's gonna happen, and then in two minutes we're gonna do Come other back here things and do more stuff. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, whenever <laughs> they <laughs> want to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're just really happy to be <laughs> here. <laughs> and, and music. Yeah.